Welcome to another Squid Sample Deep Dive, the fourth in our series of deep explorations of the Squid Sample's deeper and more creative uses. In this video, we'll explore multiple techniques for working with drum break samples on the squid, from BPM syncing loops to slicing and sequencing. Since its release, the Squid Sample has undergone numerous firmware updates, expanding its functionality to produce a fun and flexible playground for modular sampling. Throughout this video, we'll also make use of the latest addition to the firmware, the new pitch parameter, which allows sample pitch to be set independently of speed for time stretching, exciting pitch shifting effects and more. To start, we'll look at incorporating looped breaks into a patch using simple BPM matching on the squid to synchronise them. First, we'll load a one bar Amen break loop from the sample pool to channel 3. As always, adjusting the speed setting will alter sample playback speed along with its pitch. Immediately following the playback speed is the new pitch parameter, which offsets the pitch of the sample independently from the speed. Notice the playback speed remains the same when the pitch is adjusted. Let's return to the speed parameter. By holding function while adjusting the speed setting, a small BPM indicator will appear on the screen, allowing us to determine a specific BPM for the loop. Let's begin by triggering the break from Pamela's Pro Workout, which is set to 170 BPM. We'll reduce the trigger speed to hear more of the break. Again, we'll hold function and adjust the speed until the pop-up displays a BPM of 170. We can also hear the brake now sounds properly looped. Let's reduce the trigger speed further to hear the full bar length. Since our loop is now BPM synced to the Pan Pro, we can easily layer in some additional one-shot samples to thicken it up. Let's return to the pitch parameter to shift the brake's pitch without affecting its synchronization to the master BPM. We'll bring in a few more elements to fill out the track. The pitch parameter can be useful as a simple utility for basic pitch adjustment or extreme creative effects. Let's mix out our chord on channel 6 with the axon knob which is assigned to control high pass filtering. Now let's load another break loop to channel 4. We'll BPM match it just like before by holding function while adjusting the speed setting. We'll then quickly swap breaks by repatching our clock from PAM to channel 4. We'll then mix our chord back in. The 
pitch parameter works great on brakes for textural and tombral changes, especially when combined with filtering. In this next patch, we'll look at cutting up and sequencing brakes for further control over the beat. We'll start by triggering a BPM sync loop from PAM, just like our first patch. By holding function and pressing Qs, we'll enter the Q sets page to create multiple start and end points for our sample. Let's press split four times to quickly subdivide our sample into 16 equal sized Q sets spaced evenly across the sample. Once we select a set, it will begin to play. We now need to increase our clock speed to match the smaller size sections of our sample. As we scroll through the cue sets, they immediately play like slices of our original loop. Let's edit the eighth cue set. To do so, we'll select it and press the cues button, allowing us to view and adjust its start and end points. Unlike traditional slicing, each cue set can have its start and end points located anywhere on the sample. Let's begin sequencing the break by returning to the cue sets page and selecting the step playback option. Once we start the clock, we can hear the break play back normally as the squid automatically steps through the cue sets. If we select random, the break will continue playing, but with a new random cue set for every trigger. Finally, for the most control, we can assign CV. We'll use the Axon 2 expander to make use of its manual offset control. Let's trigger the Quave Mega Slope in sequencer mode and patch it to our assigned CV input. We can now sequence the break directly from the sliders. Since our sequence is short, let's set up a simple pattern on PAM to reset the quaid and make our beat more interesting. We now have a custom break pattern sequenced by CV. Keeping in mind that the brake speed is BPM matched, we'll again use the pitch parameter to alter the brake's pitch without affecting speed. As we can hear, the full range of pitch adjustment is very large, allowing for many creative uses. Let's set up a simple triangle wave LFO on PAM. We'll patch it to another Axon CV input and assign it to modulate the pitch parameter. We can adjust the CV range by holding function and pressing the assign button. We can also further offset the CV using the Axon's knob. Let's change the LFO to random and speed it up to match the trigger speed of our sequence.
Modulating the pitch parameter is a great way to make repetitive break loops more interesting. In this final patch, we'll set up a time stretch effect that drops to half speed using both the speed and pitch parameters. We'll start with a BPM matched break sequenced using the same method as our previous patch. Let's move to the speed parameter, taking note of its BPM synced value. We'll assign CV from the Axon 2 to make use of its offset control. Let's adjust the CV range by holding function and pressing the assign button. We'll set the offset to 62 to match our original BPM sync speed. We'll then adjust the attenuation to negative 31, which will halve the speed when the CV reaches its full level. Now let's move the pitch parameter and assign the same Axon CV. We'll increase the offset amount so the sample plays from its original pitch at normal speed. We'll then increase our CV to full and adjust the attenuation until the break returns to the same pitch while playing at half speed. We can now use the Axon knob to easily shift the break into half speed without altering its pitch, producing a classic time-stretched break effect. Let's connect a basic gate from PAM to the assigned CV input to immediately jump between normal and half speed. We can reduce the probability of the gate to jump to half speed less frequently. With specific offset and attenuation over CV assignments, many unique and exciting time stretch and pitch shifting effects can be achieved with the squid. Thanks for watching our fourth iteration in the Squid Sample Deep Dive series, where we explore the module's deeper and more creative uses. To explore the techniques used in this video yourself, please ensure your squid is updated to the latest firmware that includes the new pitch parameter. For more information on the Squid Sample and the rest of the ALM product line, please visit BusyCircuits.com.